lose, it's a sure thing. And then the clincher. You'd better decide to invest fast before you let this hot opportunity get away. Tonight, we're going to take a look at a business which has gotten a lot of attention lately, video games. Play them for fun, but invest in them at your own risk. There's a lot of money to be made in the video game business. Last year, five and a half billion dollars worth. So many quarters sliding into video game slots that video games made more money than any other single form of entertainment. Movie and record company executives eat your hearts out. Easy money comes to those who own video games. Just put your game in a good location and watch the quarters roll in. It sounds so easy, but listen. For every winner like Pac-Man, there are hundreds of losers. Games which don't draw. Games which stand idle while Pac-Man pulls the money in. This is the story about games like Moonlander and Astro Laser and Space Ranger. Games hardly anyone wants to play. And it's a story about Randy and Marie Zamata, Leslie Assayer, and Ruth and Pat Siriello. They bought Moonlander and Astro Laser and Space Ranger, thinking they were going to make a killing, investing in a sure thing. An investment almost too good to be true. Here's the television pitch. The newest video and pinball games are where the action is. Find out how you can own a piece of the action at Leisure Time Electronics' coin-operated game show this weekend. They said that the um, video industry was a booming industry and that they were a manufacturer of these games and that they were looking for good people in this area to become distributors for them. 23-year-old so Randy Zamata was ready for the pitch. Newly married, these games were going to be his ticket out of hard times. So for $7,000, some of it borrowed, he bought two games. They showed me a lot of figures. They had newspaper clippings, and some of the newspaper clippings said that you can make 300 a week. Some said you could make 150, some said 200 a week. But they said that they like to use a figure of $75 a week as their base so that they wouldn't overstate their product. But they made you feel like the machines could make more than that easily. Sounds good. But Randy didn't make 300 a week, or 150 or even $75. He made $15 on one of his two games, and he couldn't even find a place to put the other ones. So now... I'm very bitter. Very bitter. I don't care what I have to do to get my money back. I'm going to do it. Leslie Assayer was ready to be convinced. There have been a lot written uh, about the kind of money to be made in the business. Uh, my own limited experience in the community that I lived in, uh, that, that sort of thing. Uh, it, it was something that interested me. Um, and like everybody else, it appeared to be big money. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Hey, stranger, how you doing? Okay, how's business? You've got to invest big for the big return. We did all right this week. So Leslie Assayer sunk $21,000 into six games and waited for the big bucks. Oh, we're not going to get rich this week either. No, I don't think so. At the auto shop, the take was $6 in quarters. Half of that goes for rental of the space. There you go. Let's that all in the place here, Tom. Leslie had two games at the pizzeria. Her net, a little more than $12 a game. Video game business was slow at the laundromat. Eight and a quarter net there. I waited, you know, my week, and went out with all my keys to, to collect my hundred bucks per machine. And, um... It, it, uh, it just didn't, I, I was devastated. Pat and Ruth Siriello bought three machines for a total of $10,000. They were unable to place this Astro Laser game, so their children play it free at home. 
Siriellos say they felt pressured into buying. If they wanted my business, they could have waited. They didn't have to push us. And to me that they were pushing us, they should have gave us a hint. Did you make a decision? Well, we'll call you in two hours. Did you make a decision? We'll, have, we'll be coming up. We'll stop by and see if you made a decision. Siriello Space Ranger pulls in $5 a week at a record store. So who sold the Siriellos their three machines? Leslie, her six machines, and Randy, his two machines. That company called Leisure Time Incorporated, operating out of Indianapolis. An NBC magazine producer and photographer using a hidden camera recently posed as interested investors to hear Leisure Time's president, Joe Cassiope, make his pitch. I'm not really even allowed to go into too much of the income, but I can give you some, some just uh, illustrative projections, really, of the, of the, uh, the average, uh, not the average, but games that are out there now that there's been publicity about. In magazines such as Esquire, uh, uh, TV Guide, uh, etc., if we have copies of stuff like that, they're showing incomes of three hundred to thousand dollars a week on game. And I said, just to have a figure to work with, because if you put it out in the middle of the field and covered it up, it wouldn't make you nothing, obviously. But just to have a figure to work with, I took that low figure, three hundred dollars, and cut it in half, one hundred and fifty, and. It's a 50-50 split with the location. They get half, you get half. So you end up with $75 a week off of a game. Today, several states are looking into leisure time activities. Last year, Leisure Time Electronics was investigated by the California Attorney General's Office. California contending that Leisure Time salesmen inaccurately stated that their games would pay for themselves in just over nine months. And further, that if you bought six machines, you would earn a profit of $38,000 a year. Leisure Time never admitted any wrongdoing, but agreed to a court order that required it to pay restitution to a number of people. This past weekend, we went to a Leisure Time sales show in a Chicago suburb. We've got people on tape who are making claims from this company that the average is $150 a week. Conservatively, you're going to make $75 a week. It all depends on the location. There are games, as per Esquire, that bring in 1000 a week. There are games that bring in zero a week. It all depends on the game and the location. But when the president of this company says, conservatively, you're going to make $75 a week, what's the person sitting here supposed to think? It depends on the location. Nobody can give you an average but of what the game wasn't brings the pitch. in. The pitch was that, look, you're going to make at least $75 a week. Sure, you can make a million dollars a week. You can it do all depends on the says. location. This man said he was led to believe he could expect to earn a certain amount. I was talking to uh, Dan Kelly, and he gave me a figure which he wrote down on here for me of $124 a week is the average that all of your games bring in. This is what he told me. There's no way anybody can give me an average. But the gentleman well, he did. did. He did. That's what he told me. What was your impression when you finished with the gentleman who was talking to you about games, about the kind of a risk you would be making by buying these games? It didn't sound like a risk at all. What did it sound like? Uh, it sounded like an extremely good business opportunity. Marie and Randy Zamata showed up to confront the man who'd sold them their machines. Yeah, uh, my games aren't making the $75 a week. I want to know if you're going to buy them back for me. No, not. How come? I don't buy back games, Randy. Yeah, but you told us we'd be getting $75 a week. And 70 to 75, you're going to have 100% return in a year's time. You told us that we would get the money back on the machines within a year's time. Yes, yes you did. did. I can bring in another person who is sitting right there with us. If you can't find another location, then it's your fault you're a failure in this business. No, not the games. If your games were on location, they'd make you money. Mm -hmm. How much would they make? Depends on the location. In a good location? Depends. Average location? There's no average. Poor location? It all depends on the location, Randy. You're not going to quote me a price? Sure am not. You said $75 a year ago. You said $75. No, you did. I didn't. Where could I get that figure? I didn't even know anything about the business a year ago. All right. You're Leisure Time's representative, aren't you? I sure am. How much you want to give me for them? No, we don't buy used games back. At least I don't. But another company official did promise to return Zamata's money. Did you hear me say it? You have a certified check within three days. 
Just last Wednesday, Randy Zamata got his check from Leisure Time Electronics for $6,900. What's more, Leisure Time now tells us it is no longer selling the games Zamata, Asair, and the Cirielos bought. They were Moonlander, Astrolaser, and Space Ranger. Leisure Time is suing the manufacturer of those games. If you bought those games from Leisure Time and are having troubles with them, Leisure Time tells us they will be glad to handle your complaints on an individual basis either by exchanging the equipment, repairing the equipment, or by making full or partial repayment. Tonight we looked at one company game buyers say they've had problems with. There may be more. These are not cases of fraud. These are examples of the validity of that old saying, let the buyer beware. A sales pitch is not a guarantee. Next on NBC Magazine, who is the toughest guy in your town? Tough Man Boxing gives you the answer. They're all amateurs, and it's like watching the toughest...